Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down a prototype of Santa Maria American Kingdoms, which is the first expansion for what was the second best game of 2017 in my book, Santa Maria. Only Gloomhaven beat it. So that's uh, an amazing game to begin with. This is an amazing expansion with tons of content. Let's just give you a quick rundown of what all it is. Now, first of all, there are four different modules you can turn on to mix and match things, but no matter what, you get some basic things applied. One is these new triple-sized... Well, actually, I mean, these are triple as well. But three things in a straight line on this building tile to build. There's always two of them out. That's a really big deal, but they're expensive. Four coins to build these things. But hey, they might be a way to get cacao, which is a new resource in the game. Everybody gets one of these little tiles, and this indicates you have no cacao, or you might have one cacao. Cacao is very, very useful because its primary use is letting you change the value of dice. Although sometimes you'll use them for other things. Most notably, hey, what's this over here? A fifth shipping tile that is available? This one needs some cacao and a gem and some money to get a lot of happiness. You may notice there's a little add on to the board. That means there are five shipping tiles available at any given time and four different scholar tiles. Now, these shipping tiles are actually pretty neat because they're not associated with one of these icons. So, when you get them, you can put them in any column you want to expand, provided you don't put it in your most advanced column. You have to put it in one of your weaker ones. But still, these are very, very cool. More options for shipping. But what's this? There's more added to the board. Uh, getting bishop tiles no longer makes you lose happiness. You cover those up. And I should say, there are are new bishop tiles and new scholarship tiles. There you can see them all. If you want to go online on the Kickstarter page, you can see what the individual uh, meanings of these are by looking at the rulebook. But anyway, another thing, this particular... Uh, converting this tribe to religion gives you a new reward, including more sweet, sweet cacao. So, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of uh, little things that you'll just always turn on but let's talk about the bigger things. The first module is the governor. Everybody gets one of these, and he starts out up in the top left corner of the board. And whenever you pick a die that matches his current row or column, he will move one to the right if it's a white die, or one down if it's a blue die. And you want this guy moving around, because when he hits buildings that aren't occupied by a die or a coin, he activates them immediately. And then after he moves away, you might have chances to activate these things more than once per round. Plus, the further along you get him, the more points you get. Everybody gets a little reminder here that you need to get him to the right and down to start earning points instead of losing points by um, you know paying attention to the needs of the governor. So this is really interesting. It means you're even more than before you want to target specific dice to keep him moving to get these bonus actions out of the governor. It's a good thing the cacao has been added so you have more control over those dice that you draft. So that's very very cool. But then we've got these specialists down here. They come out randomly or assigned, and say I grab one of these fours, I also have the opportunity to spend a little bit extra and get this specialist. Now, there's um, building, uh, these building upgrades and these specialists. These guys, uh, the first one you get of one of these gives you a wheat, but you have to spend one coin. If you later on get a second one, you have to spend two coin for two wheat or and three coin for three wheat. So these can give you a lot more resources if you've got the coins um, and you pick the dice to get them. But maybe you don't want these dice because you want to move the governor. Uh, well, hey, maybe you want a two instead. That would get you one of these buildings, which become an upgrade you can put out on your board. And the nice thing is you can target these like normal wherever you want, um, but if you put them in a totally empty space, it's expensive. Three coins, whereas if you put them in an already occupied space, like changing this lumber space to a coin generating space, this only costs one coin to overwrite. So these are very cool too. Give you a whole nother way to um, you know, strategize and whatnot. Speaking of strategy, uh, the next one, the next module, the ambassadors that you can add. This one's the craziest yet. First of all, if you're going to play with the ambassadors, there are fewer dice. People don't start with a blue die, and there's fewer white dice. For, you know, one fewer white die for each player in the game because these dice are added, and when they are rolled. They're just sitting here. You can grab dice like normal, or you can grab an ambassador die, a blue or a red one. And here's the interesting thing. Hey, I really needed a, a blue three. This is fantastic. I'm going to take it. But that means I take the ambassador. And after I'm done using this, you know, putting it on, you know, row number three, activating whatever was there, and you know, ending up blocking some space like normal, everybody else gets to activate their blue three as well. 
So, taking these really introduces a, a level of kind of passive interaction between players because I really want this, but I don't want everybody else to get a free move out of it. But seeing as how there are fewer dice to begin with, these ambassadors are going to be grabbed. So you got to time it right. Try to grab these when you think your opponent's board isn't really going to benefit from it very much. Or if you're desperate, just grab it before they do. Although if they grab it, you don't mind because, hey, you get to um, use it without the downside because it doesn't block up your board. Although on the flip side, if you if somebody else takes one of these and you get to copy them, you do not get to modify the die like they do. You just get stuck with whatever it was. So, uh, the ambassadors are a really interesting element to really up the interaction of the game. But the fourth module, the Mayan City, this is the biggest game changer by far. In fact, it's such a big game changer, I gotta move all this stuff out of the way and bring in this new Mayan City board. Because this allows up to five players, um, which is a pretty big deal for uh, Santa Maria. I mean, not that I'll ever play like that, but uh, the fifth player is not a missionary is not a conquistador. The fifth player is the actual local Mayan culture, trying to get by, trying to um, you know be successful you know, with this onslaught of you know Spanish missionaries. Others uh, might call them invaders. So, how does it work if you are playing as this fifth character? Well, a lot of stuff is still the same. You still want to draft dice. If I draft this one, I put him over here and I start walking down the road. I don't have a regimented grid, um, you know, that the Spaniards do. I have this more natural board. That allows me to come along and hey, I activate this. This moves me up the religion track, and then I act. Oh, I've got to go. I can go this way, or I can go this way uh, to go and get some lumber, or come over here and get some cacao. And uh, and you know, and then when when it stops moving, it ends there, and now that's blocked. It just like. Radio game, and hey, I've, I've got a two right from the get-go. I could come along like this and end up over here and activate this and this. Um, now, there's a lot of cool things though that are you could do in addition to the regular. Uh, put a die, move them along a road, gather resources. The uh, Mayan player has a handful of cards, and there are ways to get more cards. On your turn, you could spend one of these cards instead of doing a die like normal. And when you do, you get to activate them. Uh, there are four types of cards. You can see each one of them has two uses. So, if I were to use this for um, a trade action, I could go like this, and I slot it in here to indicate I've done this once, and I will get one coin, and the opportunity to either engage in trade with the supply, swapping stuff for other stuff, or engage in trade with the other players. Are the other uh, the uh, missionary colonists, are they going to be friendly ones, or are they going to be aggressive ones? We'll come back to the Conquistador track in a second. So, you engage in trade with other players, which is really going to happen with more players, um, or with the supply. Instead, I might uh, play one of these cards that gives me a building opportunity, and this means I go on ahead and I spend the resource to add another building that matches that resource somewhere on my road, so that later on, when I activate the die, I get to do more stuff. So, I can upgrade my roads just like players. It's just that they're very windy. Um, so that's very, very cool. Then there are also, uh, I forget what they're called, but the, the green ones that basically just give you the opportunity to convert stuff into other stuff. And the more of them I play, again, you know, the, the more times I do this, instead of taking a die, you can see these fill up more and more. Hey, there's some more wheat. I'm getting more wheat out here on the board. This could be an incredibly fruitful wheat road that I have upgraded for myself. And so, you can play cards to do various things. Now, there's one other type of card, which is the blue technology card. These ones you don't play. These happen for free. If on some turn, I draft and I get a six, I can play this immediately for whatever the benefit is. So, I've got a bunch of these in my hand as the Mayan player. I have specific dice I want to chase after. And then, of course, they come over here. Now, there's a reason all these things are coming in here. Once a die has finished moving along a road and comes to a stop, like here, it comes to a stop, and hey, I if I didn't have any cacao, I'd get some cacao. In this case, I'd get more cacao. You can see uh, the Mayan player doesn't use tokens like regular players. The Mayan player can have one gem or no gem, one wheat or no wheat, uh, um, you know, etc., etc. So I got some cacao. That's great, and I have the option to build this temple or this temple because I ended on this road. I happen to have two cacao, I'll play them, and I have built this temple, and as my reward for a building on this temple, I get um, one of these high priests who can be used later on to target a particular building if I just want to do a specific thing and I don't have the die that'll get me there. So that's really cool. But what's interesting is, once I've built the first level of my temple, 
I can start working on the second level. And then once I built the second level, by getting the resources, I could start building a third. Now, ultimately, you can build a level one, two, or three temple. And the higher these temples are, the better. Because at the end of the era, when all the scoring happens, um, I get to multiply the level of a temple times the number of matching cards I played. So this is three times two. That's six bonus points I get if I built the right temples to match the cards I played. So there's this whole other little economy that's going on here uh, that's you know at once very, very different. Now, there are some other interesting elements as well. Uh, you know, I have cards that allow me to go up, let me get the main board, to go up the religion track just like a regular player. And I've got uh, spaces that let me go up the Conquistador track just like an original player. Now, if I, the higher I go, if I cross a line to get gold, I go on ahead and collect that gold, and now any Conquistador player who wants to come along doesn't get the gold. I've taken all that gold. But on the flip side, say if I've gone that far, but then a human player, or not a human player, a Conquistador player, uh, ends up passing me, then they don't take this from the supply, they take it from me. So this replica you know, emulates the, uh, you know, the, the real history of these Conquistadors coming and stealing. Now you could actually steal from another player. And on the flip side, if I pull ahead, nobody can get this gold because I was the only one to be able to get it, no matter how high they get up. Uh, if I'm working my way up the uh, track, uh, up the, uh, the the other track, I get the opportunity to collect resources and various things because, of course, we don't have monks. So that's a big deal too. Working our way up those tracks. This is such a very interesting thing um, that you know. All the core game is there. We're still moving our dice, but these roads are particularly interesting too because I can get these road upgrades that let me program. And now this die could come along, could go this way, could go this way, could come down here, or could continue over here. So you get a lot of really interesting kind of organic dice drafting and road traveling, unlike the regular Spaniards who have these very rough, regimented grids, which I think is kind of a reflection of you know their relative values of their culture as well. It's super sharp. Very, very interesting. Now, Santa Maria goes up to five if you want, although uh, all the, the Mayan stuff is, uh, is uh, compatible with the solo rules from the original game as well. And that's the rundown, folks. So much good stuff in this expansion. I was already blown away by the basic game. I'm even more blown away. Uh, that turns it into more of a brain burner. I can't imagine turning on all of these... Oh, what do you call them? Uh, all, all of these at once, because there's just too much. But too much is a good thing when it comes to Santa Maria. And that's the rundown, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.